Hi, welcome to NYP Music Theory. In this video, I'm going to show you how to complete a piano piece. It is taken from ABRSM Grade 8 Music Theory, Paper 2023B, Question 2. First of all, let's have a bird's eye view of the question. Number 1. The Composer Wolfert is a German composer in the period of classical era. 1791 to 1883. Number two, we will look at the key and prepare for the related key chart. Without any sharp or flat, we affirm that this is either C major or A minor. As we look further to the first chord, it's C, E, G. So we can confirm this is in C major. For the related key chart, it's like this. Number three, we will look at the time signature. It's two four time means two crochet beats in a bar. And number four is the tempo. Allegro means lively or fast. It will affect the harmonic rhythm, either one chord per beat or one chord per bar. Number five, we will look at the phrases. That means the cadences. Since we understand in classical period, the structure is really well organized, usually with balanced phrase, four bar phrase or eight bar phrase. Now, as we look at bar four and bar eight, we can assume there is an imperfect cadence here or a perfect cadence at bar eight because this chord looks like a 5-7 in C major, and 5-7 will resolve to 1 here. Then further down, we will assume either there is another cadence here, or we may confirm at the end, sure, there will be a cadence. Number six, we will observe the chromatic notes or chromatic chords. As we browse through every line, every bar, there is no chromatic notes and no chromatic chords, but there may be implied modulation. Because as we observe the last bar, it is in A minor chord, and A minor is the relative minor of C major. Most likely there will be an implied modulation at the end. Number eight, we will look at the melodic shape. The melodies are mostly stepwise movement only a few leaps. Number nine is the rhythmic pattern. We can observe the two quavers pattern or the four quavers pattern here, and the rest are all crotchets with some rests here and there. Then finally, we will observe repetition, imitation, or sequence. In the first four bars, we can see there will be a sequence here. E, D, C, B, C. And the next quaver here starts with F. This prompts us to move these few notes one step higher. And it all works well with the left hand also. From here is one step higher than bar one. So we can assume there is a sequence here. For imitation, we can see starting from the second half of the first phrase are uh, quaver movements. And this beam prompts us that there will be a continuation of quaver movements. And as we look at the third line, it will be the same rhythmic pattern. So we can use imitation of the rhythm here. Then as we go to the end of the phrase, this E and D resembles the first phrase, E, D, C, B, C. Most likely we can do a copy of this, that is the repetition, E, D, C, B, C. But we'll look into it as we go deeper in the next step. Now here I have finished the demonstration and I have jotted down the Roman numerals so that we understand the chord progressions. Let's look at the first two lines. We have mentioned that we can use a sequence here. 
So F E D C D is one step higher than the first two bars. Same as the left hand. And if I analyze it, it's 1B, 57C, and 1. Then go to 2B, 1B, and 57C. This looks like not a complete sentence. So there may be a continuation of this 5C to 1 in the next line. Then we can choose so far me. And actually, this is a continuation of building up the climax. The first phrase is mi re do, and the second half is fa mi re, and the third one starts with so fa mi. In order to have a little bit variety, the rhythmic pattern change. And I have used changing note here. So this bar is still a one chord, C, E, G. The D and the F are changing notes, and the F here is a passing note. Then the one chord continues with a B passing note here. Go to a 5-7 chord towards 1, which is a perfect cadence. We can see this A is an accented passing note. La, so, la, ti, do. Then after this, accented passing note again. The G and B are the chord tones. Then after we finish the first complete sentence, it will go back to the repetition of the first two notes, but this time use a softer dynamic. As we look at the big picture, this E, D, C continues and the rhythmic pattern resembles the second line. Let's look into the details. We look at here is the starting point to modulation. And we take the A minor chord here, A, C, E, which is a six chord in C major equivalent to A minor one chord. So this is a pivot chord. And again, the ray and the T, that is D and B, are changing notes. A, C, E are the chord tones, and this D is a passing note. This time, the F here is an appoggiatura. Then go to four, five, in perfect cadence here in A minor. Four chord is D, F, A. D, F, A. Then we have a C as a lower auxiliary and this E as an anticipation of this E from the five chord. So E, remember to write a G sharp because this is a five chord in A minor. Then what about this A? This A is a pedal point a pedal point of A minor. Then as we move towards the end, this is again a repetition of Mi, Re, Do. Then we keep on the A minor. To confirm it with the G sharp in the bass, here we have A minor 1, 5, 7, B, 2, 1. Then again, this F is an appoggiatura. Then go to the final cadence is 5-7-D to 1-B, E, G-sharp, B, D. And here C is the passing note. At the end is the first inversion of A minor chord, 1-B. All right, let's have a listen to it. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe, like, share, and comment below. See you in the next video.